I am back down at the land again, plugging away at the old bungalow. So I figured I'd give you an update of what I'm up to right now. This is our bungalow, our Gothic arch building. Our total cost so far is coming up to about $5,000 right now once we bought the sheetrock and the wiring. When we left off last, I was going to do some boring wiring. So I'll take you in and show you what I'm up to. I did manage to get more done than just the wiring. That actually didn't take that long. I went ahead and started hanging sheetrock, as you can see. There's my little kitchenette. I got the end walls done. I'm going to put pine up on the peak. Yesterday, I worked on the little bedroom down here, and it is little. It's hard to film, but you'll get the idea. I pan around. The breaker box is going to be hidden behind the door. And as you come out here on the left is the little bathroom. Today, I'm going to work on the shower. I bought a shower pan, a nice 3x4. And I'm going to build the end wall and get going on my plumbing. As I lay out my wall for my shower, I have to determine two things. One, the height of the shower handle itself. What feels comfortable? I chose three foot six inches. And then the other thing, I need to determine how deep into the wall to place the shower valve. Too deep and it won't fit right. Sticking out too far, I'll get a water leak. Delta puts on this nice big plastic template. This gets snapped off and thrown away when we're done. This allows us to set the valve depth into the wall. Here's my little mock-up. If I put a 2x4 on the flat and then affix this to the 2x4, right off the bat we can see it'll be about the right depth to allow for a layer of wonderboard and then a layer of tile to come across right here. We'll snap this off and we should get a real nice fit. As I'm running in and out to the saw, I noticed I had a little visitor, a little groundhog, who came to entertain me. I'm going to conduct a little test here. I put a cinder block on top of the groundhog's little burrow he started. And I'm going to see if he can lift the cinder block or get out while I'm over here cutting up some wood. There's my completed wall. Now we'll go take it and try it out in place. Well, it's been an hour or so. I guess the groundhog either tunneled out or he's got more patience than me. Is he in there? I don't know. Well, I guess he wasn't interested in moving a cinder block. Here's a progress report for the bathroom. Now that's the little wall I was working on. And we put the wonder board up, which is a piece of cake. And here's the hole cut out for the shower valve. Uh, one other thing I had to tackle was a vent. And because of the curve, 
It was a tight fit. There's a stud right there, but I got her in. That's what it looks like on the outside. Nice and neat. Well, I got to get back, finish up this bathroom. That's the end of hanging sheetrock for me. Thank goodness. And then mudding and taping, which is everybody's favorite, and sanding, priming, painting, and all that stuff. And I'll be able to hang some doors and trim and all. See you soon. Well, I'm hard at work in here. As you can see, I've got some of this place taped. I'm moving into the bedroom, but I've got to run a couple wires first. So here we are in the tiny master bedroom. I need to run the feed wire to this box here. So this lower sheet has not been screwed on yet. Well, as I work, I can't help but remember seeing many pictures and I've been at many jobs where the drywall work was done wrong. And I just thought I'd show you um, a little bit about taping. As you can see by my knife, there's a gap. On the long edge of the sheets is a tapered edge we call the tape edge, or I call it the tape edge. And here I've cut out an outlet. And we just use this paper tape. That self-sticking stuff. That stuff you see at the uh, big box store for the happy homeowner. That's no good. You don't want to be a happy homeowner. It's pretty simple. <clears throat> Just put on the mud. Go right over the box. Don't worry about what gets in there. You know what's going to happen? It's going to harden. And then tomorrow, I'll just knock it out onto the floor. And when I shot back, we'll pick it up. Just put on a layer of mud. Grab your tape. And then just eyeball it, stretch it out. Let it set right into the mud, go right over the outlet. Use your knife right there. Just lay it in so it's stuck in there. All right, now the goal, whenever you're doing drywall, is always to squeeze out all the excess. You don't go along and leave blocks like this on the wall, ever. That's bad practice. So we just take out all the excess. Now remember, it's gonna shrink. So I'm gonna have to add more, you should take four coats to complete a tape joint. This can be a pain at the corner. Little. That's it. One tape joint done. When you're doing your nail holes, none of this foolishness. Bad practice, doesn't hold up well. All right, a little bit of mud on the knife. One continuous motion, boom. Up, down, up, down. Done. So one day you say to yourself, gee, I'd like to do a little drywall, but I don't have any drywall tools. I wonder what it'll take. Six tools you need. You need a knife. This is my six inch knife. Drywall hawk. Feel free to make one. I've made nice ones out of a little scrap of half inch plywood. These aluminum ones are nice. Gives you a nice surface to work off of. You're going to want a 10 or a 12 inch knife. Anything bigger than this gets unwieldy and you can do a heck of a job with this one blade here. Roll of tape, a couple of bucks. Bucket of compound. 
comes in three different weights. This is the medium weight. It's a little bit lighter than the green bucket. And for your finishing up and knocking off boogers, you're going to want your pole sander. I've had this pole sander since I was about, gosh, 19 or 20 years old. When I first started buying my drywall tools, and I've probably had this knife here since... I don't know, the early 90s, mid 90s, they just keep on going. That's really all there is to it. Now at the end of the day, you've got all this junk on your, on your hawk, and your tools are all mucky and dirty. You don't have to run to the sink. You don't need running water. Pop, pop off your pail, right? Scoop it. One motion. Boom. Alright. The rest will dry tomorrow. We'll clean this up. Same with the knife. You want your knife clean? Same thing. Scrape, scrape, boom. Scrape, scrape, boom. Scrape, scrape, boom. They'll dry. Tomorrow we'll just brush them off. We're done for the day. I decided against using this 10-2. I wanted to run four small circuits and have a little more power here. So I ordered a roll of 10-3. So that's uh, three conductors and a ground. And looky what we have here. Now I went on eBay. I went to the absolute cheapest seller on eBay. I didn't care who it was. And look where this package came from, boys and girls. Can you see that? Home cheapo. So I don't know what the deal is. I have ordered three rolls of wire from three completely different sellers on eBay. All three, including the shipping, were much cheaper than what the wire cost at Home Depot or at Lowe's. That's why I ordered it online. And guess what? All three rolls came from Home Depot or Lowe's, shipped and handed to me for less than it is in the store. I don't know what the deal is with that. Be a smart sharper. There's great deals on eBay, and sometimes you can even ditch the old sales tax, too. Do you believe in angels? There are three that come check out what I'm doing every once in a while. Listen. What I'm working on today is some trim for the window and the two downstairs windows and door. And the theme here in the bungalow is cheap. So what I did is I bought these furring strips. They're $3.99 for a 14 foot, basically a 1x4. Here's what they look like laid out on the sawhorses. Nothing special, some kind of dug fur, I think. I took some measurements for my extension jams and cut out the appropriate sizes. Then I had to, like, cut out these bad pieces, you know, and throw them away. So that's a loss. So I'm over here ripping them to the right width. And I started off by just... Uh, cleaning up one of the edges here, so I had something square to begin with.
just drop our extension jam into place. Nice. Now to head down and make some molding out of this stuff. I got my first window all trimmed out. I'll give you a peek. It's awful hard to film into a lit window. You get the idea here. I'll try not to look directly into the sun. Ah, I can't do much better than that, I'm sorry. But those fur and strips, they came out nice. We're going to urethane them and I think that'll do just fine. Man, I was really on a roll and I was getting trim cut for the other windows and the door and thinking about heading down to the lumber yard for a little more when disaster struck. Ah, my trusty saw blew up. Listen to this. I've babied this thing. It's had a good life. Whoa, listen. Ready? All right, that's not good. I think the blade's going to come off or something. I'm going to have to call it quits for now, I guess, and end this video. Now that my saw is down, I'll head out, look for a new saw. And I've got a whole list of other projects going on in here. And in this brain of mine is some musical stuff I'm hoping to come up with. Share it with you later. See ya.